Yesterday, we spoke with the co-founder of the Istanbul International Literature Festival. The theme this year is breakwater, the idea that literature can create a safe zone for writers and readers to explore the social and political issues of our time. Whether that means staying near safe shores or explore, exploring oceans of translated fiction, attending the festival is Bulgarian author and playwright Georgi Gospodinov. In his most recent award-winning novel, The Physics of Sorrow, the main character is a minotaur, a creature portrayed in Greek mythology as part man and part bull. The minotaur has a blessing and a curse of being able to enter the stories of others by empathizing with them. We're lucky enough to have the man himself here. It's Georgi Gospodinov, the author of The Physics of Sorrow. Welcome to Showcase. Um, what I wanted to ask you, of, uh, ask you about is The Physics of Sorrow. Is, this is the title, but the main theme seems to be empathy. Would you agree with that? Is that one of the main themes of, of yeah. this novel? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's about empathy and about deficit of empathy in our world now. And the main character, which is a boy, nine years old boy, uh, suffering from extra empathy. So that's why he can enter into the stories of other people. This is one line. And the other line is about the Minotaur as, as a kid, as you said. And because, you know, when we have empathy, we could see behind the Minotaur the kid that was abandoned, not just a monster, because for us, the Minotaur from mythology is a kind of monster. But now the truth is that this is small, it's a little kid that was abandoned by his father and mothers. So these two lines are connected in the, in the novel. I read somewhere that this was inspired, this story was inspired by a 2010 survey about uh, Bulgaria being the saddest place yes. in the world. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, uh, we were announced as the saddest place in the world uh, by the magazine Economy. And uh, it is this typical rank of happiness. And I wanted to ask myself why we feel as the saddest nation in the world, as the saddest place. But when I started to write my novel, I realized that actually the world became the saddest place. <laughs> it's not only Bulgarian yeah. sorrow, Bulgarian huzun or something like that. It's, it's the, the, the world became the saddest place. But uh, in a way, uh, novel, it's also, a, it's a funny novel also. It's not only about the sorrow, but the sorrow, I think it's most important human condition to feel the sorrow. It's also, uh, when you have this feeling of sorrow, you increase your empathy to the sorrows of other people, which is important. A lot of your writing seems to be rooted in magical realism, which is common in countries with a difficult past. Do you think that it's that we often see sort of writers doing magical realism with countries yeah. in countries where they're struggling to come to terms with a, a difficult history? Yes, of course. When you come from the country which was a champion of sorrow, <laughs> <laughs> you must survive <laughs> using some magic things, some magic realism, so some irony or self-irony. So I like, I love this way of storytelling, but to be serious, it comes from, I think, from our oral story traditions on the Balkans and also from my grandfather and my grandmother. They were real magic realists. Uh, even they never read Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say are some of the stereotypes of Balkan literature at the moment that you would disagree with? Uh, I think that, that yeah, uh, with irony, I could say that there is a kind of hierarchy. In the beginning, you're a Bulgarian writer, Georgi Gospodinov. After that, you became a Balkan writer, then Eastern European writer, then European writer, and after that, if you are lucky, you will be just the writer. <laughs> so we have these stereotypes with I don't like them, these labels, because of course you're coming from these places, you bring the sorrow of these places, but you're, you're, you're telling your personal stories. Now, you don't just write novels, you also mm. write short stories. One of them was turned into an award-winning Oscar short film. Um, it's called Blind Vaisha, and it's about a girl who's 
blind because she can only see one eye sees into the future and the other sees into the past. How on earth did you come up with such an incredible idea? <laughs> you know, I just, uh, I was in my room when I started to write this story and I thought, what will happen with this room after 100 years and what was this place 100 years ago? We are sitting in our past with half of us, with our left eye, with our right eye, uh, right eye. we are sitting in our future. So we are really blind for the presence. Do you, is this in a way like a cautionary tale reminding us to be more present, stop looking into the future, stop looking into the past and just focus on what we can see right now? Uh, yes, and it's also about it's also about the empathy, but environmental empathy. You know, if, you, if you're a real, really empathetic person, you could see the world in his past and in its future, and you will, you will love this, and you will try to, to keep this, because the world is a perishable place. It's a very easily disappearing place. And this week you've been, in fact today, you've just come from the Bulgarian literature event at Istanbul's mm -hmm. Literary Festival. How did you find that? Have you been speaking to other Bulgarian writers? This was the first anthology of contemporary Bulgarian literature that was presented now, which is really, it's a very good news, but also strange news because we are neighbors. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's true that the most difficult thing is to be curious to your neighbour. And is that what you hope for the future of Bulgarian literature, that it sort of continues to expand and that people continue to be curious about it? Yeah, I believe because we have so many untold stories in our place. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing many, many more of them. Georgi Gospodinov, thank you very much for joining thank us you. today.